Hey guys, Henning and Morten here from Flip Normals. And in today's tutorial, we are going to show you a little bit of a blend shape trick, sort of similar to what we did last week with ZBrush, where we showed you how to enhance details in ZBrush of an already existing sculpt. You can do something similar, well, actually exactly the same in Maya, just using blend shapes and negative values and blend shapes. So we're starting off just showing pretty much exactly what we showed in ZBrush, and then we're going to have a more advanced thing later on in the video as well. So we'll start off with our little spiky head here of our alien. And the way this works is that it, it'll, it'll, it's based on the, the difference between the two meshes. So the more different you can make them, the more intense your details will be. But uh, that, I think that'll make more sense when I show you. So I start off by just duplicating my mesh here. And so they're identical. And the first thing I want to do is I want to smooth it out. You can do this in, in ZBrush with the smooth Deform, deformation thing, yeah. or you can do it in Maya by just selecting all the verts and then going shift right click average vertices. You can also just do this if you want to just smooth select areas. Like the brush, uh, the sculpting tools in ZBrush, or sorry, ZBrush and Maya today are pretty pretty good. Yeah. So you can just smooth select areas using those. So I'm just repeating the averaging action with G, just to make a quick wow. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's that's not very good, but this is perfect for what we needed to. Yeah. So let's just hide the outliner. So with blend shapes, the way that it works, like I, I still get confused by this because selection order in Maya is different based on <laughs> yeah. constraints and blend shapes, obviously, and other things probably. Yeah. Uh, it's just inconsistent. But with blend shapes, you want to select your blend shape first, and then whatever mesh receives that blend shape. So it'll be, this is our current blend shape. We want to apply this blend shape to the main mesh. Um, let me just, yeah, select this, select that, and go to the deform menu and blend shapes. So if we come to the main mesh now, under blend shapes, hit details over here. So with your middle mouse button, you can actually just drag out here. Or after you've selected a, an attribute, you can just drag to activate it or like up and down the slider pretty useful you don't have to go and type in the number um, so we'll just set it to one and you can see now we have this blend shape perfectly but this is not what we want so if we set it to minus one instead it'll subtract, it'll subtract the shape so it's a little hard to see so if we go to show selection highlighting <laughs> there's actually a super nice little trick as well show selection highlighting is amazing because that means you can have the mesh selected while not having any wire for anything on it mm. I, I use this so often and when I learned that that was like a major major thing for me and that's, uh, that's pretty beautiful yeah pretty beautiful um, so all it does is that it just subtracts whatever we had in our our blend shape compares it to the original shape and this yeah. so like the difference between the two so where this gets useful because this is not useful here, uh, sort of like a similarity between ZBrush and this, is now we can actually start to paint in where we want the details. So if you just right click on your mesh, come down to paint, blend shape, you can see we have our base weights connected here. So this is the, so there, just to clarify a little bit for the blend shapes here, this is the overall blend shape. So if you had multiple shapes connected, like if you had several of these connected and you painted the weights on this, it would affect all of them. You can go in and paint out individual uh, individual ones as well. So if you have, I want the details from this mesh here and I want mm. the details from this yeah. mesh somewhere else, just a little quick trick there. Also, as a note here as well, like what Morton is showing here is that you can paint out any deformer. Like you can paint out blend oh, shapes yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. This deformer. works, this works, this works whatever it is you're using. This is incredibly useful as you can essentially, you can essentially just show uh, only parts of a deformer. So what yours would look like in the beginning is uh, is this. Um, yeah. This is a future trick. So I'll just hide <laughs> that for now. Um, <laughs> so it would be white. It means that we've filled our shape completely with a hundred percent of the of the weight for for the blend shape. So and that means that that's why everything gets affected by the difference of yeah. those two. So if we set this to zero, and make sure it's on replace, flood everything, we're back to normal. So yeah. let's go back to selection highlighting. And this is where it gets tricky. So now we want to actually paint in the details. So if I go to one again and have it to replace, I can paint the details back, but I can't actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> no, you're working completely Introduce, in the blind. <laughs> introducing future pass trick. Uh, <laughs> go down to display and click the color feedback. So now you actually see the mesh without seeing the weights. 
um, can be useful. Like sometimes you want to see the weights because you want to sort of figure out how yeah, much has sure. been applied. But for this, just set it to one. An important note to also keep in mind is that this works with a tablet, so tablet pressure. So mm. if you're using a mouse, I think it works differently. Yeah. Um, yeah. Man, there are so many tricks in this video. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I should not be like negative blend shapes. There should be tricks in Maya. <laughs> yeah. But now we can go in and just enhance the areas that, that mm. we want. It's like So exactly like in, in Zero, actually. You want to give her that full Botox Kim Kardashian <laughs> look. Oh, that's... It's pretty, it's pretty scary. Something. Um, there we go. So, so let's say this was... Sorry, go ahead. So this can be used for anything. Like if, if this is hard surface or whatnot, this is just, this is just, you want to enhance any model. If you're doing like a terrain or a tree or whatnot, doesn't matter. We're just choosing, showing like a weird alien demon chick here with Kim Kardashian lips, but this can be used for, for anything. Um, and if we go to color feedback again here, <laughs> you can see if you hold down control, you can subtract things from your weights mm. and shift, you'll just smooth it out. Yeah. So, man, so full of tricks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's pretty dope. And if you wanted to increase it even more, actually, because there's a live bridge between these two, if we go ahead and average out these again, you'll see we'll start to add more Whoa. to the selection. Oh, little nifty trick again. <laughs> but man. if you don't want to do that, let's say you have a super high risk mesh, you don't want to do that. You can come under your blend shape node. And just instead of having minus one in your shape, you can set it to minus two. Can you set it to minus like 10? I, okay. That would just entertain me. I mean, try. Pew! <laughs> oh God. <laughs> so you can see, you know, the world is your oyster, <laughs> so to speak. Um, yeah, so pretty. That's, I, I'm actually curious to see what other people could do with this, because I think there are bunch of possibilities. That yeah, so feel free to write it in comments. Like if, you, if you've done anything cool mm. with this trick here, or if you have something, if you have a way to enhance this, because this is this is fairly simple in a way that, you know, you, you, we are simply just taking the blend shape and inversing it. If you ha if you have a way to like, s to connect this to another super trick or something, you know, just just let us know. I mean, I, I think it's hard to improve upon this. Yeah, it's pretty May, maybe one or two ways. But I, don't <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> now, if you stuck around long enough, here's some bonus stuff for you. This is for the more advanced users yeah. out there. So yeah. face shapes. So this is just one example. Another one example of how to use uh, negative blend shapes. Yeah. Okay, I'll just uh, let's just have a little pretend story time here. So let's say you're working in a pipeline and you've published a model. This model, which is this model here, uh, it's going through the pipe. It's been rigged. It's been textured. You cannot change it in any way. You're not allowed to change it. And trust me, this happens. <laughs> this happens. So we have this beautiful mesh here and you can't change anything. Someone out there is supposed to do face shapes on it and they take it into ZBrush and they subdivide up. They go down to the lowest level again. And all of a sudden you end up with this jumbled mesh and this, this is what happens. Like, this is an exaggerated uh, example of what happens in ZBrush. But yeah. basically, if you go up to, you subdivide your mesh up and you, you know, shift D down to the lower subdivision mm -hmm. level again, your mesh will actually shrink. Yeah. So if we just apply this mesh as the blend shape, just as a quick example. This is absolutely infuriating in ZBrush, the fact that by subdividing your model, you can see the shrinkage you're getting here. So so a lot of times you won't actually notice this. And if you're doing a personal project, that doesn't matter that much. But in this case here to the left, the model has been published. You are not allowed to, pub to, to touch it at all. So if this shrinks this much and you're, and you're doing blend shapes on the wrong one, you're in a lot of trouble, young man. <laughs> So uh, what you saw me here was just clear the connection. You can do that by selecting your mesh and shift alt D to just clear the history. Yeah. So clearing the history will just wipe all your shapes. Yeah. And just a quick another tip. Oh, we're so full of these tips today. <laughs> uh, again, oh, this is actually this. so full of tips in this <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> so we want to just a quick tip. So select your blend shape here and then select your main mesh, apply blend shape. If you want a greater degree of control uh, whenever you're this goes for any attribute. It's not just for shapes. You have this little button up here. And if you click it once, you see it's like a speedometer. So mm -hmm. now it's like super low. So that means if you look at this value here, we actually get a super low range. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Marcus, my supervisor for this one. Super helpful trick there. Um, this is super helpful if you're doing some shapes where you need like really fine degree of control. 
It's a really nice way of controlling it. So I think we'll just set it there because then we get a little more control. Perfect. Okay, back to the actual matter at hand. So we had a published model in the pipeline. We can't change that. But someone went into ZBrush and they started doing shapes. Right, and they took your model into ZBrush and they forgot to correct the shrinkage mm -hmm. that exists or that happens when you ever, when you bring it into ZBrush. So exaggerated example, an exaggerated example with a brow raise here. Very interesting. So Very good blend shape point. If we were to just apply this brow shape now to our original mesh, you could probably guess what happens. Apply it and it gets the brow shape all right, but also gets the shrinkage. No good. So clear the history on that. So the easy way to fix this is just select your brow raise shape and a neutral of your, you know, subdivided going down into subdivided. Yeah, the soft again. one. So select those two, uh, order doesn't matter, and then select the last mesh. So that order is important. It's still like those two would, f they just act as blend shapes onto the main one that yeah. receives the blend shape. Okay, there we go. That's Turn on selection highlighting now again. Now for the magic. So if we activate our brow razor, you see we get the poopy stuff. And then if we set our neutral one to minus one, now we can play with the this. And now we only have the brow raise value and we have the, the gooey head subtracted. So if you're in a production and uh, and you've been struggling with this beforehand, you're and you don't know about this, essentially your fix is radio to blend shapes. Yeah. That is an incredibly nasty way of doing it. Or you have this one little trick, which will which will just which will just work instantly. I've used this before a couple of times, many times now, on many shapes, <laughs> um, and it, it really it really comes in handy. Yeah. So I would really recommend just giving it a go like trying to figure out the selection order and just making sure you're comfortable with it. I think it could really save a lot of people a lot of hours out there. Yeah. And like with anything in terms of the shape, you can always go in and uh, like put up your values well, if you wanted more. Like it goes for all of this. Yeah. So if you wanted a really beautiful uh, brow raise, you could do like that. <laughs> Super nice. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you want more content like this in the future, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.